Like and subscribe right now, or this spider will crawl on your face while you're sleeping. We all love an underdog, don't we? Someone who won't be bullied, who will stand up for themselves and their rights in the face of an all-powerful corporation or government. There are many cases of heroes and heroines like that who didn't allow anyone to force them out of their homes. Let's have a look at stubborn homeowners who refuse to move. Number 10. Yang Wu This example of stubborn homeowners will show you that the residents of China sure know how to make a point. This house looks like it might have been in the middle of a massive explosion. This truly incredible family held their ground until it gave way beneath their feet. The developers were forced to work around the Wu home after they refused to sell. When the family left on a trip, the construction crew actually excavated a 30-foot deep trench around the house. When they got back, the family broke into the construction site and moved back into their house. Legend has it that the homeowner, Yang Wu, was a local martial arts champion, and he carved out a stairway up to the house using just his nunchucks. It's also reported that he threatened the construction workers. Eventually, the Wu family came to an agreement and sold their house. We can only imagine how big the paycheck was that finally convinced them to sell. Before we move on, I've got a little challenge for you that'll take five seconds to complete. So here's the deal. You just leave a like on this video, smash that subscribe button, and hit the notification bell, and you'll get 25 years of amazing luck. Try it, it really works. Number 9. Farm inside of an airport. You can't choose your neighbors, as Tokyo's organic farmers know all too well. They have been in a decades-long battle against Narita, the country's second busiest airport. The farms are virtually surrounded by Narita Airport, and jets from around the world roar down right next door to the rows of peas and radishes, whose green leaves wave in the spring breeze. The fight has proved a major headache for Narita. The airport is Tokyo's main international gateway and handles 40 million passengers and 250,000 flights a year, almost 90 flights per day. Narita has been controversial in the region since it was first proposed by the government in 1966 as a three-runway facility, sparking protests by activists and farmers. The airport opened in 1978, but continued local opposition meant it operated with a single runway until 2002, when a second opened after the authorities purchased farms from some farmers and built a runway there. There are still farms around the runway, and the farmers are still fighting for their rights. Number 8. Macefield In 2006, Edith Macefield took a stand against developers by staying in the house in Seattle's Ballard neighborhood where she had lived for almost 60 years, despite being offered money to leave so new retail and office space could be created. Both she and the 1,000-square-foot house became a symbol of standing up to corporate giants after developers were forced to awkwardly build around it. The story mirrored the plot of the Disney Pixar movie Up, which sees an elderly man refuse to leave his house to go into a nursing home. So, he turns it into a makeshift airship by attaching balloons to it. By 2006, Miss Mayfield's home stood almost alone, her neighbors long gone, as developers prepared to build Ballard Blocks, a retail and office development. She was offered $1 million in cash for her property, in addition to assistance with housing and healthcare. But she turned down the money for the simple reason that she didn't want to leave. However, Miss Macefield passed away from pancreatic cancer in June 2008, leaving the house boarded up and empty. Number 7. Halfway House We've all had a difference of opinion from our neighbors. Some of us may have argued a time or two, though we are sure the dispute was settled in an adult fashion. The two residents that occupied this duplex, however, absolutely could not see eye to eye on whether or not to sell the building. As you can see, the dispute never got resolved. This half house originated in 1957, when one occupant of the duplex refused to sell their home to a development team in Toronto. 
Instead of scrapping the project, the team continued construction, dismantling the duplex until just half remained. Amazingly, this half house is occupied today. Number 6. Stubborn Nail House In China, there is a phenomenon known as nail houses. These are homes that homeowners absolutely refuse to sell under any circumstances. Literally. In China, it's the government that wants the residents to sell, and they don't have a problem playing dirty. Oftentimes, water and electricity are cut to the homes of people who refuse to sell. And yet, these persistent owners refuse to budge an inch. They are stubborn like a nail. That's why they're called nail houses. One such resident in Ruyan, China, was the only person in her neighborhood who refused to sell her property. Even when the units on the left and right of hers were torn down, she stayed even though her water and electricity had been cut off. Number 5. Chinese Highway Built Around a Farm Farming requires resilience, even if that means defying both your government and a large construction company, and forcing them to build an enormous highway around your property. Yi Tan, 72, and his wife Shen, 71, owners of a small barnyard plot in Dongying, China, refused to sell when developers came knocking. The city's ruling body didn't want to see the project sidetracked, however, and so came up with an easy, not easy solution build around the land. Cut to today, and the farm stands alone like cheese, smack in the middle of a large multi-lane highway. In other cases of highway around a house, there are always proper roads made, but not around this farm. There's but a single dirt pathway that wraps around the grassy knoll where ducks and chickens roam. Smaller cars have so far managed the detour, but all larger vehicles are forced to retreat. Number 4. 360-degree view. Living in an abandoned lot might be one thing, but how about right in the middle of a four-lane highway? This is another example that takes place in China, where three families reportedly linked arms and refused to let bulldozers through to demolish their homes. There's one thing you have to understand about China. During most of the communist era, private ownership of property was abolished, making it easier for residents to be moved. But now, the laws have been tightened up, and it's illegal to demolish property by force without an agreement. Surprisingly, the government relented, opting instead to build the massive highway all around the building that housed the families. We are sure they thought all the noise and hustle and bustle would convince the owners to sell after all, but they underestimated the stubbornness of these three families. Number 3. Macy's Holdout – The Million Dollar Corner for decades, it's been hidden behind billboards or wrapped in a giant faux shopping bag. Many shoppers never even notice it, but old photos reveal a five-story building sticking out like a sore thumb in front of the world's most iconic department store. Although Macy's leases ad space on it, the five-story building has never been owned by the store and is one of the most famous holdouts in New York's real estate history. It all started around 1900 when Macy's, then located on West 14th Street, began picking up land in Herald Square for its huge new shopping mecca. Macy's had a verbal agreement to buy a plot at the corner of 34th and Broadway, but an agent acting on behalf of rival department store Siegel Cooper scored the plot instead. Reportedly, the agent wanted Macy's to give Siegel Cooper its 14th Street store in exchange for the land at 34th, but Macy's wouldn't have it. The store was built around the plot instead. In 1903, Siegel Cooper put up the five-story building that's still there today. And with that, it's now time for today's subscriber pick. Today's photo was sent to us by one of our subscribers, so if you come across a photo online and want to know more details about it, just send it on over to us. We might even feature it on a future video. Number 2. Luo Baogan In the eastern Chinese city of Wenling, a lone five-story row house with ragged edges stands in the middle of a motorway in all its might. This house belongs to Luo Baogan, a duck farmer 
and his wife, who are the lone holdouts from a neighborhood that was demolished to make way for the main thoroughfare heading to a newly built railway station. Luo and his wife insist on living in the half-demolished building because they believe that the relocation compensation offered by the government is not enough. Luo had built his house at a cost of about 600,000 yuan, which is about $95,000, when the government first approached him with their standard offer of 220,000 yuan, around 35,000, to move out, which he refused. The offer has since gone up to 260,000 yuan, more than $41,000. It is common for local authorities in China to take extreme measures, such as cutting off utilities or moving in to demolish when residents are out for the day. Luo told local reporters his electricity and water are still flowing, and that he and his wife sleep in separate parts of the home to deter any partial demolition. What a life they're living. Number 1. Atlantic City's Heroine There once was a widow who lived in a house by the sea. It wasn't much of a place, just a fading, clapboard-clad box a few steps from the boardwalk in Atlantic City. Across the street stood the mammoth mix of blinking lights and concrete that makes up Trump Plaza Hotel and Casino. With help from the state, Trump hoped to claim and demolish Koking's home, as well as nearby Italian restaurant and jewelry stores, to help create additional parking and a waiting area for limousines. After five years of legal power struggle, a judge in 1998 ruled for Koking in a decision celebrated by many local residents who believed the casinos were swallowing their city. Trump, in an interview, said he was not interested in the property, but the news of a billionaire losing to an old widow made it to the front page. Vera Koking House still stands in all its might, looking down on the Trump Plaza. That is our list of stubborn homeowners who refuse to move. Would you ever allow yourself to be forced out of your home? Let us know in the comments below. And if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel.